Hello and welcome to part six in a series of videos giving you tutorials on how to use the share and activity builder functionality. In the previous video, we looked at the checkbox exercise and how to use that with your learners. And now finally, we're going to look at two different ways that you can use the drag and drop screens. So let's create a new screen and let's click on drag and drop. So the first way that the drag and drop can be used is to fill in gaps in sentences. So where it says click to enter text, I'm going to be entering my sentences. So just for example, Miles Davis used to play the something. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a space there and then a full stop. He was very good at playing something music. Okay. So we've got two gaps there that we want to fill in. Okay. So the way to do this is by adding your answers into this box under here. So let's put one of the answers, which will be trumpet, and then let's add another answer, clicking on the blue plus sign, which will be for jazz. Now you'll notice as well by default when the drag and drop screen loads is that you also have one distractor. You can take out the distractors if you want, but they are there that you can use them as red herrings with the students. So I'm going to add a couple of distractors. One will be piano and the other distractor will be uh, orchestral. Okay. So you'll notice now in this grey box here only the two answers actually appear. So at this point in time, this is where the students would put those answers, but we don't want them to put them there. We want them to put them in the sentences. So what we're going to do is, let's take trumpet here. I'm going to hold down my mouse button. I'm going to drag it up into the area that I want. What I'm going to be doing is hovering the mouse arrow over the word before I want to put this word in. And notice that the word before it is now highlighted blue. So when I let go of my mouse button, the word trumpet will now snap into place. I can now do the same with the word jazz. So it's going to go after the word playing. Again, hover over to this highlighted, let go, and it snaps into place. So this is just one way that you can use the drag and drop functionality. You can also, like with the checkbox and the radio button exercises, you can give marks for correctly answered choices and randomize the potential possible answers as well. So all four answers or possible answers will appear on the screen when you go to preview the page. Obviously, only two of them are correct because there will only be two spaces. The other popular way that drag and drop exercises are used is by labeling up diagrams. So let's say I'm going to put in here, please label this diagram. Still with that text box open, I'm going to click on picture. I'm going to find my image. And it will now be inserted into this area here. So now when I click outside, it will fit nicely into the box. So this is where, again, I can now add where I want the answers to be. So let's say I've got the zebra, add another answer, which would be my elephant, and add the final answer, which will be my lion. I don't have to use distractors, so if I do want to get rid of them, I can click on the red cross here. And again, with these, it's just as simple as dragging and dropping these particular boxes into where the students should be answering the question. So let's leave those there like that. And let's again mark for each correctly answered choice. Okay, so I'm happy with all that bit now and my activity is now complete. So I'm just going to give it a save. and I'm going to preview my activity as well. So here is my information page, here is my free text page, 
the radio button exercise, the checkbox exercise, the first iteration of the drag and drop, so you can now see that the dotted uh, boxes represent where these answers need to be dropped into place. Okay, and the final one, which is our other version of the drag and drop, which is to label up diagrams. And you can swap them over as well if you wanted to. In the final video, I'm going to show you how to publish your activity, set grey boundaries and timers, and also how to either share with your school only or share with the SAM learning community.